When Harry Potter arrived at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, one of the first rituals that he had to undergo was that of the Sorting Hat. This is a rather animated sorcerer's cap that is placed on the head of every new student to help determine which of the four Hogwarts houses they belong in. They place the hat on, on the student, and the hat determines through the skills and personality of the individual which is the most appropriate house for them to be in. And when the house boldly proclaimed Gryffindor for Harry, it told us more about him than we had known up to that moment. For we knew that if he was part of Gryffindor, he was brave, he was noble, he was loyal to his friends, and just a little bit adventurous. And in fact, the Gryffindor insignia on his chest and the red and gold scarf he wore around his neck were more of a sign that he was the hero of this literary classic than even that noted lightning scar on his forehead. That was his identity. That was the image he bore. Now, today's gospel reading is also about image and identity, although it doesn't seem to start that way. It starts with the Pharisees and the Herodians trying to trap Jesus by asking him a question that no matter how he answers it, he's going to get into trouble with someone. They say, is it lawful to pay the census tax to the Romans? Now, if Jesus says that it is, then it means he is acknowledging the sovereignty of a pagan empire over the people of Israel. And even worse, the leader of that empire, Caesar, claimed to be divine. Now, if he says it's not legal to pay the census tax, well, then he's breaking the Roman law and probably going to end up in jail. So they figured they've got him stuck on the horns of this dilemma. But we all know that Jesus is not so easily entrapped. And he turns it around on them by asking them a question that reframes the entire issue as something far more to do with than just paying taxes. He asks them whose image is on the coin. And they say, well, it's Caesar's. He says, great. If it's got Caesar's picture on it, it belongs to him. Give it back to Caesar. But then he springs his trap. For he says, and give to God what is God's. Now, the key to his entire discussion with them is his use of the word image. Because he says, whatever bears an image should be given back to the owner of that. And every good Jew, and hopefully every good Catholic, knows that you and I are made in the image and likeness of God. And therefore, what he is challenging them to do, he says, I don't care about your coins, I care about you. And you need to give your lives back to God. You see, the Pharisees and Herodians now had a decision to make, and it's the same choice that you and I are faced with. Do we bear the image of the world, Caesar, or do we bear the image of God? In the Harry Potter books, you were just bearing the image of one of four houses. Each of you would help you live your life, but in a slightly different way. You know, if you were Slytherin, that meant you were very clever, perhaps a little bit sneaky, and very much into yourself. If you were Ravenclaw, you were going to use your intellect. If you were Hufflepuff, you were part of those nice guys that, that helped everyone. And as we said, if you're Gryffindor, you were brave and noble and adventurous. But the decisions that you and I have to make are far more important than what Hogwarts house we're going to belong to. Because that has to do with how we choose to live our lives. As an image of the world in Caesar's house or in God's house. Now, I love the falls, and one of the main things that I love about the fall season every year is college football. And I love Saturdays in college football seasons because I see the flags go up outside the households, I see the shirts being worn as everybody shows the colors of their favorite team. And we have bulls, and we have gators, and hurricanes, and knights, and seminoles. And then something mysterious happens because on Sunday, all of those colors change and our professional affiliations come out. And we have buccaneers and dolphins and jaguars, or, or quite honestly and more typically, 
the team that was from our hometown before we moved to Florida. And different times of years, we show different allegiances. When national holidays come around, people literally wrap themselves in the American flag, putting stars and stripes on to show their patriotism and their allegiance to our country. When political season comes, the yard signs go up, the bumper stickers on the car and the pins that are worn, all to say what party or candidate that we align with as well. All of these affiliations that we show are an attempt to claim an identity. In fact, to say who we belong to. And in and of themselves, there's actually nothing wrong with these affiliations we claim. Jesus, in today's Gospel reading, does not say, don't give anything to Caesar. He says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Jesus is recognizing that it's not an either-or. Jesus understands that we live in the earthly kingdom with one foot already in the heavenly kingdom. And what Jesus is asking us to do as his disciples is to bring those aspects of the heavenly kingdom, God's love and truth and mercy, into the earthly kingdom that we live in today. So it's not a choice of either or, so you can all take a deep breath now. You don't have to give up your support of the 6 and 0 Golden Knights. But what the question is, is where are our priorities? Which house holds us to the higher standard of life? Which one do we choose first? Is it the house of Caesar or the house of God? Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had a very important conversation with many of the lay leaders in our church, and we were talking about a difficulty we find that we're facing these days. It's becoming increasingly difficult to get volunteers in support of ministries and activities in the church. And so we asked ourselves, why is this so? And after a actually very brief discussion, we hit on the answer. The church is no longer seen as the center of the family's life. Now, when I was growing up in the 60s in San Francisco, and if someone asked you where you were from, you know what your answer was? It was the parish you belonged to. You would say St. Gabe's or Holy Angels, St. Ignatius, Holy Name, Corpus Christi. That is how we identified ourselves because our entire lives really were focused around our parish, our social life, our sports life, our education life. The church was at the center of who we are. But that's not so much true anymore because we find that most of our families are asked to bear allegiance to a wide variety of organizations and activities outside of the church. There are countless activities that call our attention and demand our time from the schools. There are club sports teams and many other affiliations and organizations to which we belong. And it is the reality of life as we see it in the 21st century that our families are so busy with virtually every night of the week booked and every weekend day that there is scarcely any time to further connect with our church community. And I'd like to say that I was above all of that, but that would be a lie. See, when Rosie and I were raising our children, we faced that exact same cha uh, challenge. Between school sports and club sports, between drama and band, and dance rehearsals and performances with speech and debate tournaments, well, our lives look just like all of our neighbors and all of our friends. We were booked end to end. And it was causing stress on our families. We often said, won't it be great once the kids are grown and we don't have to run around like chickens anymore? But we realized we had to make a decision. What were we going to prioritize in our life? Were we going to prioritize a relationship with God's house or Caesar's house? And so we made some decisions. We started to scale back on some of the very many activities that our children and we were involved in. Now, because I read minds, I also can read emotions, and I see the panic on many of our youth's faiths. 
because they're saying, oh my gosh, Deacon Dave is telling my parents I can't do club sports or dance or whatever anymore. That's not necessarily what I'm saying. It may be a decision that a family needs to make that you do a little bit less than that because otherwise we are caught up in this cycle of bearing the image of Caesar and not the image of God. It's a question of where our priorities are going to lie. How much attention and time do we give to God? And how much attention and time do we give to everyone else in our lives? You know, as parents, if we take the position that, just as Rosie and I did at the start, we'll just deal with it until the kids are grown and then we'll get our lives back in balance. My friends, we are doing a severe disservice to our children because we are not only creating in them a life of anxiety, but we are also teaching them that it is okay to prioritize God last. And we see how well that is working for society these days. And even if we don't have children, if we're a single person, or if we're a, a couple whose kids are already out of the house who have never had children, the same rule applies to us. If all of our priority is on our work and all of our other activities and organizations, and we continue to not make time for God, then we are setting ourselves up for failure. We are creating a recipe for our lives that will be unfulfilled, emotionally exhausted, and incomplete. It's a question of priority. Something else that happens in the fall of each year in the U.S. Catholic Church, of course, is our stewardship drives, where each of us are asked to recommit intentionally how we wish to steward our time and our talent or treasure back in support of the mission of the church. And every time this comes up, I grow very frustrated. And I get frustrated because of the very limited view that most people have of this. They say, well, this is just the church trying to get more money from me. And I feel sorry for people who reach that conclusion because that is a limited, incomplete view of what's happening. Now, before I shoot myself in the foot as the director of operations here, yes, there is a financial aspect to it. Like any organization, like any household, we have expenses. And just like in all of our households, those expenses go up every year. So yes, there's a financial part. But if we start with the financial part, that's where we make the mistake. Because I have been convinced for years and have said over the same number of years that God does not want 10% of your wallet. He wants 100% of your heart. God wants relationship with us. And once we give the priority to that relationship, then our stewardship of time, talent, and treasure is automatic and generous. We don't have to focus on it. It just happens. But it's a question of focusing first on that relationship. We all received those intention cards that came in the mail with a letter from Father David over the past week or two. And I will tell you that I believe the most important line on that card is right on the front of the card in the middle, and there is no financial number on that line at all because it says prayer. If you and I make a commitment to prayer, and I'm not just talking about reciting more Hail Mary's Our Fathers and Glory Bees. Those are fine, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the type of prayer where every day we enter into a dialogue with God about those things that are most important in our lives. And it doesn't matter what our age, if we've had a, a tough day at school or a great day at school, if we've had a tough day at work or a great day at work, if our family gets on our very last nerve or they're all saints, that's what we bring in conversation to God. And then we listen. And we hear how God is speaking to us in that moment, in that relationship. My friends, if that is where our focus is, then we will understand where God is using, uh, calling us to use our time and our talent and what sacrificial gift, financial gift, he's calling us to give to support the parish ministries as well. 
Whose image do we bear? Is it Caesar's or is it God's? Another way to ask that question is if a non-Christian looked at us, would they even know that we are a disciple of Jesus Christ? Or does our life look just like everybody else's? If it does, then I would suggest that we are bearing the image of Caesar and not the image of God. The good news is we can make a choice. The good news is it's never too late. The good news is that we can change our priorities and instead reflect in our image the image of Jesus Christ who aligned his entire life to the will of the Father, who is willing to give his life for us. And the question is, are we willing to give our life to him? Give back to God what is God's. Our entire life is from God. We wouldn't have the breath in our lungs without God. We wouldn't have the talents that we use in our lives without God. And what Jesus is calling us to do is give back what is imaged in God's likeness back to Him. So our choice is much more important than Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, or Hufflepuff. It is a choice of God's house or Caesar's house. And my prayer for all of us, for my family and yours, is that we choose to repeat the words of the Old Testament patriarch Joshua when he proclaimed, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord.